It's time to take a look inside ECSU Mighty Vikings football. <laughs> Welcome to Viking Coaches Show with Marcus Hilliard on WRVS 89.9. Happy Monday, family, and welcome to Viking Coaches Show. Yours truly, Clay Mercer here, and as always, sitting across from me is the head coach of ECSU football, Marcus Hilliard. Coach Hilliard, make you make you exciting times right now here on the campus of ECSU. Thank you so much for making this show happen. I want to talk about the word underdog because we've heard this a few times when it comes to ECSU, the underdog role, and you you kind of you kind of take that with you know you don't mind that role. Tell me a little bit about what that word means to you and and, and why the team just seems to get behind that and, and it fuels them. Yeah, um, well, being an underdog, man, you just you know nobody expects you to do anything. Yeah, and um, you know we kind of took that role, you know, just going into this game and but with us, man, we didn't feel like we were underdogs. Mm-hmm. We just felt like you know we could compete with. You know, even the top teams in Division Two, mm-hmm. and and we practice that way. And I've been saying it for weeks. And finally, finally, yeah. man, we're able to put it together. But we didn't feel like we were the underdogs. That's for you know, for the media and mm-hmm. and the the fans. They they felt that way because if you're looking at the records, then mm-hmm. of course you would say that. But for us, you know, we it was a time for us to just prove ourselves. Yeah. And that's basically what, you know, we, we wanted to come out and do. We talked about this before. This team has been knocking at the door all season long. You talk about putting together the full game with less penalties, and we'll talk more about that in a few moments. But this matchup against an undefeated Virginia State team, let's just jump right into it. They started off the season with a win over D1 Norfolk State, nationally ranked, one of the best scoring teams in the conference. They pride themselves on the running game and running the ball. They're the second best team in the CIAA going into the game, uh, running the ball. Talk about the preparation leading up to this contest, uh, really just to kind of make sure you can hold them back from what they want to do offensively. Yeah, um, I mean, they, they're a good team on the run, but we are we are as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I think um, one of the things Coach Finnan does is he puts together a plan. And if you, you look at what we, what we did against them, you know, just with um, – Zeke being able to, mm-hmm. you know, I think this is the second consecutive game over 100 yeah, yards, man. Yeah. And, you know, us being able to rush. And we, we saw that, you know, and it's nothing that we, we we knew that we would have to come into the game to stop number two. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we know he was um, – Clark, we know he was he was pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, we know he rushed for a lot of yards. But it's nothing like we hadn't seen those type of backs of the C.I. Double A has those type Correct. of backs. <laughs> we, you know, you see a Jada Byers and you see him. So it's mm-hmm. it's all the same. You yeah. prep for them all the That's same. Right. They all good. <laughs> but um, we have a good back as well. And, you know, just um, glad of how, you know, we were able to put a plan offensively um, together to – kind of um, counteract that. Yeah, we talked about the game that V-State played the week prior, 39-23 win against Bluefield State, and you and I, we looked at that score, and I looked at you, and I said, well, that seems a little off. Uh, when you look at that score going into the game Saturday, what were your thoughts on what the Vikings may be able to do out there against Virginia State's defense offensively? Well, the staff was <laughs> – they they felt pretty good about it. They were saying it all week, like, Coach, these guys are in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, I know Coach Finney had mentioned that a lot, like, Coach, these guys are in trouble. And, you know, we just stuck with the plan. We just stuck with the plan. The preparation was still the same. You know, we, we know what we were doing um, or what we are doing was right. And, you know, we just continued to grind, grind it out, man, yeah. and, you know, Fortunately for us, we were were able to pull one out, man. (laughs) It was Breast Cancer Awareness and Community Day over at Rogers Stadium. ECSU won the toss, and you and I have talked a little bit about this, too. You regularly, you know, you'll choose to defer. You like to get the defense out there, and recently you want the offense to get out there. So just give me the mindset of what goes into making that decision, and I guess really it depends on the team that you're playing. Uh, Tell me a little bit about making that decision. Well, just wanting to get offense off to a fast fast start. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we... you know, the last I think last three weeks if we won the toss, um we we wanna receive the ball mm-hmm. and it worked out well for yeah. us. You know, we kinda went to um some of the changes that we made for this game. We kinda was in an up tempo mm-hmm. um mode and it, it kinda stunned Virginia State a little bit. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we did some tempo things to them and it you know, it just allowed us to get in the groove and that's that's kinda the thinking behind that. Gotcha. You know, and just wanting them get them out fast mm-hmm. and 
you know, see if we can put some points on the board early. Took a little while, not as fast as the Vikings wanted it to show up, but they scored the first point on a 25-yard field goal kick from Carson Hancock to make the score 3-0 near the end of the quarter. And, you know, again, that field goal finished off a long drive for ECSU from the ECSU 13-yard line. Your thoughts on that drive specifically and just being able to get out of that drive with at least three points? Yeah, I think that was an 18-play drive on, on that. That ate up a lot of clock. Yes, but it did. I, I, I'm glad for the field goal, but mm-hmm. we were on the two-yard line, and we got a false start penalty. And that's the things that we still got to <laughs> work on, man. We, we we need to score seven points, yeah. you know. And, you know, I'm I'm glad we, we scored three, but – we got to be able to focus in, and, you know, that's the message for this week, paying mm-hmm. attention to the details yeah. and not having getting those penalties because against another better team, you know, we might not get that break. Correct. So we, we got to take advantage of all the um, things we can, mm-hmm. you know, in order to, to win the game. But, you know, just glad that we scored first against a, a nationally ranked team. It yeah. felt, felt, felt pretty good. Virginia State was held scoreless in the first, but their QB, Jordan Davis, was able to complete several passes to get ECSU's one-yard line. He was able to rush that thing in for a touchdown to get their first score, and obviously they took the lead. Uh, they are more so known as a running team, but were you a little surprised as how often they went, especially on that drive to the air, in order to get into the end zone? Yeah, it took us off. Off B for a minute, you know, um, we were preparing heavily for them to try to run the ball. Like you said, they were second in the conference. So um, they changed it up. Yeah. You know, number 14 was able to complete a couple passes, and they did some things that, you know, played to his strength. So, you know, um, we, we were expecting it, but, you know, Definitely expect for them to run the ball a little bit more than what they did. Mm -hmm. Around the eight-minute mark, Davenport hit Ian Edwards with a 50-yard touchdown pass. First play of that drive, what went right for ECSU to make that happen? The the crazy thing, man, we've ran that play uh, probably every game. Yeah, I think so. We we (laughs) ran that play every game. So we finally executed. You know, people were saying, well, where was that play? Man, if you watch what we do, we ran that play every game. Mm -hmm. That is not a new play for us. We were just able to execute. And, you know, again, your guy Ian, man, you know, I told you he's one of the fastest in the league. And, you know, you put the ball in the playmaker's hands, man, they're going to make plays. And Mm -hmm. that's what he did. And, you know, it kind of gave us the momentum. Yeah, yeah, and, and momentum is something we'll speak about here as we get ready to head into Saturday's game. But we still want to go through this one. And defensively for ECSU, Code Blue stepped up, especially to end off the first half. V- VSU actually went for it on fourth and four. And Jalen Dollar shut that down, sacking Davis. And any chance they had of scoring before the half was out, ECSU goes into the locker room, 10-7 lead. Overall thoughts on the first half and your message to the team in the locker room. Um, I thought we played well. You know, I told the coaches, um, again, we, we got to be able to capitalize off opportunities. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I love to get points, but seven points is better to me than three. Oh, and so. that that was the thing. And I just told the guys that we now we got to finish. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys can – you see we can compete. You see, you know, we don't care about that ranking. We don't care about any of that. We're here. And, you know, and now we got to be able to finish. And that was the message to the team at halftime. Not caring about their ranking. You bring that up. Obviously, it's in your head. You know about VSU and what they're talking. It's also – you may not want them to care, but it's also motivation, I would think, for the team, too, to say we're going to go out here, beat this team, and make a statement. I'm sure you was able to use it a little bit as motivation going into the game. Too. Oh, we, we use it all week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're the number 20th ranked team in the nation. And, you know, this is just an opportunity for you to – be on the national stage and show up. Uh, so mm-hmm. we we definitely use that as <laughs> some motivation. But, you know, in the game at that point at halftime, it don't matter about that. Now Not you're it. up and, like, now you have to finish. Yeah. You know, that all that other stuff we were talking about during the week is cool, but – you're here now, yeah. and, and now you got to be able to put it together and, and get a win. Well, i tell you what, VSU would have the ball to start off the second half. Could ECSU get the job done? We're going to find out. We'll recap the second half a little bit more coming up, and we'll give some kudos to some special Vikings. That's all on the way. It's Viking Coaches Show on WRVS 89.9. Do you have a question or comment for Coach Hilliard? Call into the show, 855-899-WRVS. 
Discover your future at Elizabeth City State University during the Fall Open House on November 4th. Explore the campus and find out why Publication Washington Monthly ranked ECSU number two in their 2023 top bachelor's colleges list. Register online today at vikingsadmissions.ecsu.edu. What is Cafe Mocha? Cafe Mocha is experts, celebrities. What's up? This is Bell Biz DeVoe. This is Trudy Idris Elba. This is Fantasia. This, this is Invo. What's up? This is Brandy. Music and features from a woman's perspective. Intriguing conversation. Espresso. The Mocha Mix. So much more. Radio from a woman's perspective. What flavor are you, baby? This is Cafe Mocha. WRVS FM. Saturday, 2 p.m. and Sunday, 8 p.m. Your community voice. From the football field to the radio, this is Viking Coaches Show on WRVS 89.9. Welcome back to Viking Coaches Show. ECSU had the Trojans in a place they weren't very familiar with, down at the half. How would they respond? Well, two plays into the first drive of the second half. Their QB Davis throws an interception as Grant was able to come up with a pick six. Ran that bad boy back. Hancock with the PAT gives the Vikings a 17-7 lead. And Coach Defense stepping up in a big way. And Grant just continues to play well for you. Yeah, we 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 needed that one, man. Um, you could kind of feel the energy shift, you know, from our team. Um, even looking at their sideline, it was like, wow, these guys are really mm-hmm. – <laughs> they're really trying to win this game. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure what they thought. I, I don't know if they thought we were just going to come there and kind of lay down, but – <laughs> you know, the guys heard the message at halftime finishing. These guys really put their foot down, man. And that interception return by Grant, I told him I thought he was going to get caught. You know, if, if you, you look at it, man, at first I was like, man, don't be slow. Don't, don't get do caught him by like that. that. Don't get caught by a lineman, bro. <laughs> but um, like I said, man, he's come in and been a contributor for us. And, you know, just happy to see him mm-hmm. be able to make some plays. And I'm just happy for him, man. Yeah. You know, seeing his senior year, and he's really been a – Driving force for us um, on the defensive side. Yeah, fine job by him. Uh, uh, that would be the only score in the third quarter. Still a lot of game left to play, and you don't want the players thinking that this one is over, even though you've got that that lead right now. How do you and the coaching staff, when you talk to them on the sideline, keep that mindset from falling into their heads that, look, man, we got the lead. We're going we're gonna to win this one. You got to calm them down a little bit and keep them focused. Yeah, and I go back to it, man. I'm still not over it. The homecoming game when yeah. we're up. Um, but – kind of just wanted them to to focus. And, you know, one thing we do at the beginning of each fourth quarter, man, I bring them all in mm-hmm. to try to reel them in. We, we're right there at the That's 50, and I, I reel them in and just let them know, man, look, look we got to refocus. Mm-hmm. We have to finish. We, we're up. We got 15 more minutes. Let's let's, let's finish the game. And that, that's that's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. You just got to get them relaxed. You know, that you can't be too high, can't be too low. They're going to make plays. We're going to make plays. You just got to be even keel. We just got to make more plays than mm-hmm. them. So that was the message, um, you know, going into the fourth quarter. And that's how this season has really been. It's about being able to finish it. The Vikings have been in pretty much every game that we've played. It's just about finishing it in that second half. And the Vikings fans were, I know they were excited just like I was. 17-7 lead going into the fourth, but I'm sure there was a little bit of hesitation, a little nervousness because anything can happen. I hate using that cliche, but it's the truth. And the quarter obviously didn't start well for ECSU with a fumble, fumble by Davenport, giving the ball right back to the Trojans. They were score. Uh, three on the next drive to tighten the game up 17-10. Obviously not the start you wanted in that fourth quarter. Yeah, we're going to make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, uh, we, that's us. We're going to make the game interesting. You can get your money's worth. And um, it was so many so many ranges of emotions just during that time, um, you know, because of what's happened in, yeah. in previous games. Yes. You know, like you said, we've been in every game this year. And so, you know, just – us trying to focus everybody, you mm-hmm. know, focus in on everybody and, you know, just having a small talk with Davenport and just letting them know, man, just calm down. We, yeah. we, we're, we're good, man. But like I said, we, we're going to make it interesting. Definitely. <laughs> you can stop That's making it do. interesting. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, we, we don't need interesting goals. We'll just take the win. But anyway, on the next drive, though, ECSU would drive the ball down to the VSU 19. Field goal attempt by Darius Satterfield was no good. Uh, obviously giving the ball back to VSU around that seven-minute mark. This would have probably, in my eyes, put the game away. I think that would have put it out of reach for VSU, even if, if nothing more, just for time. It just wasn't a lot of time left. But it's a true example of how important special teams in the kicking game is. I say it all the time, man. Um, it can win or lose you ball games, And, 
you know, typically in my career, um, either plus two or minus two mm. with, with games, mm. with special teams. Yeah. Go back again to the to the John C. Smith game. Yeah. You know, we get a block kick and they return it for a touchdown. So, you know, it, it, it's critical. It's critical. And we spend a lot of time on it. Mm-hmm. it. It is a segment or a phase of the phase of the game that we spend a lot of time on to make sure, you know, we always talk about winning um, two of the three phases mm-hmm. of the game. And special teams has to be one of them. Mm. So that, that that is big for us. And you can see how critical, you know, it came down to both ways. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, very <laughs> much <ways>. so. <laughs> so it, it's critical, man. It's nothing that I, I just say is it's really a, a critical deal. And we try to – we practice that every day. Mm-hmm. Every day mm-hmm. we, we put emphasis on that. Yeah, VSU would strike again with about two minutes left to go. A touchdown pass from Davis to Lucas Nunez. Would make it 17 to 16. And I'm sure at this point in the stadium, everybody listening, everybody watching, figured that they will go on, tie it up, figuring overtime's going to happen, all of this stuff. But no, their kicker, Matthew Ward, missed the PAT. CSU would hold on to a one point lead, about a minute or so left to go in the game. But looking over at you at the sidelines, I saw your arms go up. How, how shocked were you that that ball did not go through the upright? In my mind, I already prepared for overtime. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. just, you know, transition because we hadn't had an overtime game this year. So just, you know, because it was windy down there. So I'm even preparing like, OK, um, you know, are we going to be up on offense? Mm-hmm. And, you know, which way do we want to go or whatever? And um, he missed the kick. I'm like, man, that's it was awesome, yeah. you know. But then I had to get back in my coaching mode like they're going to try to onside. So you we got to get the guys back focused. Yeah. Again, special teams. It's something mm-hmm. we practice every day. And, you know, we had to get the guys back focused for mm-hmm. the onside kick because mm-hmm. we knew it was coming. And, you know, for me, it was just not a not a sense of relief until we were able to, <laughs> you know, get it over with, actually, yeah. or, or, you know, in, or finish the game. As you knew, the onside kick was coming. And so special teams, we just talked about how important it is. So you had special teams. They were set up. VSU did the onside kick. They recovered that onside kick, took it into the end zone, and amongst all the celebrating and cheering and screaming from their crowd, it just seemed like immediately you kind of knew that it didn't go well. It was going to be brought back. Something was off, whether it didn't make it down the field enough. It, it, it just your thoughts on how all of that kind of transpired. Well, one, you you know, you couldn't advance it. So, I, I mean, you know, even if they would have got, you know, it would have been a dead ball there. Mm-hmm. But um, – you know, up top they were saying, Coach, it didn't go 10 yards. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it went nine, and it's clear on film. Mm-hmm. Um, it's difficult to see because, you know, usually you, when you do onside, you want to make sure it's to your sideline. You know, so it, that's just a trick. We do the same thing. We If, if we were able to do onside, we were always – do it to our sideline. I probably mm-hmm. shouldn't have said that on the radio. No, but it's okay. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have gave that out, but that's that's kind of some of the thought into it. Um, ho- hopefully, we won't, it won't come down to where we have to kick or almost our kick. But anyway, um, so you know, just seeing that we were able the things that we practice. You know, we do a Friday script where we practice these situations, nice. and it it actually. It's something that we had to execute, and, and we we were able to, and the guys knew what they knew what they needed to do, and mm-hmm. you know we were able to come out yeah. with the win. You could tell the kick was just short of ten yards when we was watching it. I was like, no, I didn't go far enough, and even with them taking it into the end zone, you know, they couldn't do anything with it. But the Vikings would kneel down a couple of times and walk away with a massive seventeen to sixteen victory over Virginia State, and I say massive because. Obviously, not many people predicted ECSU to come out of this game with a win. VSU picks up their first loss of the season. Some have described this as the biggest win the program has seen in years. Some have said that this is the biggest win for you as a head coach. Your thoughts on the impact of this win uh, and what it, uh, the impact is on the program moving forward? Yeah, I think it's both. You know, um, I've, I've been a part of this program for a while, and, and at least for the last – 20 something years mm-hmm. and I, I I can say that it is being you know being a ranked opponent you know um, that, that just doesn't happen or hasn't happened here um, in a while and, and for me it just validates kind of what we're doing as a staff mm-hmm. as a coaching staff as a team you know it's, it's validating these things not having the best record but knowing that 
you know, the things that we're doing, they work, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just validation and it, it could work against ranked opponents. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we just got to be um, consistently good. It's just the things I've been preaching, yeah. you know, and, and for me, it's just, like I said, it's validation and it is one of the biggest wins probably in Elizabeth City State University history just because we hadn't beat Virginia State in like 10 years, man. Correct. 2011 that, was the last time, if I remember 2011, correctly. 2011, man, yeah. that, that's big. And then to go on the road to beat them. Correct. A lot of teams just don't do that, man. So just proud of the guys, just proud of the coaches of how, you know, they were able to persevere. And, you know, it, it just validates. And that and that's the big thing. The kids now know. Yeah. You know, you sometimes you, you have faith, but you want to see it. And now they see, like, and we're a pretty good football team, man. And we, if we can get it together, we can we can be good. Yeah. So. As you stated, we've been knocking at the door all season long. We may have just kicked that door down. Who knows? ECSU had more rushing yards than Virginia State in this one. Held Virginia State to about 46 net yards on the ground. Only six penalties for ECSU in this game. Uh, more positives yeah. <laughs> from your observations we, for the Vikings. Yeah, we ran for those penalties <laughs> today. Like, uh, we're going to get our penalty day in now. It's, you know, none changes. They know who we, <laughs> instead of us having 12 or whatever, we yeah. got six, but we ran for those penalties. Yeah, today, yeah. And they know, and, and that's the buy-in of the guys. They they want they want to be good. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to be disciplined. Um, they want to be disciplined. Um, so, you know, for us, just the positives, being able to, Finally, close out a game, and it was a it was a close game. But guys stepped up and made plays, and you know, for us now, like I told them, man, that's over. Mm -hmm. You know, we celebrated. We had that twenty four hour. Hey, it's it's on to the next game, and we have to refocus because um, we got another good team that we're playing. Yeah. Um, it's another week where. You know, we're playing a Bowie State team. We hadn't beat them in nine years. Right, that's right. <laughs> so it's a lot of – you think that was history. You come up here to Bowie and you, yeah. you play well and you win this game. So um, just just love the vibe on campus, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and they feel it and they want to kind of keep that going. But for us, we just got to be able to finish games, play penalty, pretty much penalty, free football, mm -hmm. and um, we're running the ball. Pretty, pretty good. Yes. I think we're third in the conference. Mm -hmm. We're we're running the ball pretty good and play solid defense, man. I, I you know, uh, the coaches say it all the time, man. Coach, we're the best two and six team in the country, man. And I, I believe that, yeah. you know. And I know it sounds crazy, but nobody wants to play us in Division Two. Nobody wants to play us because I think we talked about it last week, man. Mm -hmm. For Virginia State, this was just a trap game. Yeah, if, yeah. If you, you talked about that. You brought that up. Yeah, if you watch our games, you you don't want to play us because. Mm -hmm. You know, you go in there, don't be slipping because we'll, we'll get you, man. So that's a positive <laughs> that we think, and we, we're, we're, we're happy, and we're, we're ready to move on. Obviously, everything's not a positive. We talked about some of the fumbles that took place in the game. I believe we fumbled the ball about five times in this game. Anything that kind of makes you a little worried, or was that just one game and we need to move forward for Bowie State and try to you know make sure that doesn't happen on Saturday? Not worried, but um, that's what the focus is. is we got to pay attention to the details. It's even going back to – um, looking the ball into the tuck for the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Just concentration drills. You know what I mean? Um, when we're under center, just making sure your hands are in the right place. You know, that's the attention to detail that, you know, I put on the plate for the coaches this week. We just got to make sure that we're paying attention to the little things, mm -hmm. knowing our alignments, knowing what we're supposed to do. Um, so, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not concerned. I'm just, we got to get back to the basics. Yeah. We got to make sure that we – re-emphasize everything we've been talking about all year so we can be successful. Yeah, good mindset going into Saturday's game. Before we get to Saturday's game, kudos to ECSU's Ian Edwards, the grad out of Cocoa, Florida. Hope I got that right. Yeah, got four, right. yeah man, four receptions, <laughs> including a 50-yard touchdown catch to pick up the CIAA Food Lion Receiver of the Week Award. I'm just impressed with him, and I'm sure you've been impressed with him all season. Man, great guy, man. Yeah. Great guy. He works hard, man. Uh, good kid, man. I, I, I love him, man, and I'm just happy. I'm just happy for him, man. I'm just happy for him, man. And you know, he does he does everything the right way. Yeah, playmaker for real. I tell you what, we're going to need him to make plays on Saturday. Bowie State is calling as we make our trip up to Maryland. Uh, Bowie State coming off a 40 to 11 win against Bluefield State. Bowie has won the last nine straight and are 11 and two against ECSU since 2009. 
They come into the game with a 4-4 and record. Not what many expected from this team, but their quarterback Jordan Morse played very well against Bluefield State, 13-17 on his passes with one touchdown. Kickoff for this game is set for 1 p.m. Your thoughts on the game coming up this Saturday against Bowie State? Bowie is always a tough game, and now we have to go, you know, to <laughs> go into their house, man. It's always tough to play there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we have to uh, double down with our focus, double down with our execution. Um, they're, they're a well-coached team, and, you know, they, they, they are the champs, you know. They, well, they've been champions, mm-hmm. and, you know, they still have that championship pedigree, and we're going to have to go in there and play our best our best football game, man, in order to come out with a win. Yeah, we've so. got a really good shot on Saturday. Again, kickoff of the game is set for 1 p.m. And, of course, it'll be available on the CIAA Sports Network. Uh, Coach, I'll, I usually always like to give you a little bit of time to kind of just give your thoughts off your off the top of your dome, off your heart. Just talk to Viking Nation. Give them a little bit of love, especially for the crowd that showed up for ECSU at Virginia State. A very good crowd for the Vikings, a lot of blue, and then get them ready for Saturday. I, I felt the energy, man. Just appreciate all the fans, even the band that showed up, man. That that like we talked about, man. Just having that energy. Yeah. You know, we have that home energy, but it was right here um, in Petersburg on Saturday, man, and and it felt great. And like I've been telling the fans, man, it's coming. You know, I know it hasn't been as fast as a process as you would like it, mm-hmm. but you can see kind of some of the fruits yeah. um, of the labor, man. And, and this game and this win kind of proves kind of what we're trying to build here at Elizabeth City. And, um, you know, just want that continued support from them. And I, we, we felt the energy. We, you know, when I turned around and I saw all yeah. the fans, yeah. man, it, it was something to see, man, and very positive. And, you know, after winning the game, man, they were just as happy as, as us, yeah, man. And right. so, you know, just want, want to tell everybody it's coming. You know, this game proves that um, we're, we're fighting and it's no quitting this team and we're, we're, we're going to get this thing. We're going to get this thing rolling. Yeah, it was one of the biggest, biggest news stories coming out of the weekend in Division Two football and ECSU with a big win over Virginia State. Hopefully next Monday we'll be saying ECSU with a big win over Bowie State. Again, kickoff set for 1 p.m. You could get more details about all of this. And again, ECSU returns home in a couple of weeks. And you can get your tickets and more information online at ECSUVikings.com. Uh, Coach, again, thank you so much for doing what you do, making this happen. Congratulations on the big win this past Saturday. And uh, good luck to you on Saturday. And, of course, we'll, we'll talk all about it on Monday next week. I appreciate it. Thank you. But Coach Hilliard, I'm Clay Mercer. Don't forget, listeners, if you missed out on any parts of today's show, you want to catch up on past shows, just go to the WRVS 89.9 YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page and listen anytime. We thank you for joining us for Viking Coaches Show. We'll see you next week exclusively here on WRVS 89.9.